Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome back again to the course on convex optimization. A course on convex optimization is not feasible unless you have some idea about convex sets and convex functions. Now, we had already spoken about convex sets and convex functions in the previous lecture, but let me tell you a bit more detailed study about convex sets, what are their important examples and convex functions, what are their important examples, what are their important properties would lead us to understand convex optimization better. Here our aim is not necessarily to give a proof on of each and everything that we do except possibly the major ones, but here our aim is essentially convex optimization and not really convex analysis as per se and what we are going to do here now is a part of convex analysis. I would begin with by showing you, you a very, very important book uh, on this subject. It is called the fundamentals of convex analysis by Hiriya Turuti and Lemarechel. This is a book on convex analysis has beautiful chapters on convex sets and convex functions, possibly one of the best expositions of the subject and I strongly recommend this book. So, we go back and relearn our uh, notion of a convex set. A set is convex if for any x y which is in the set C and any lambda that you choose between 0 and 1, lambda times y plus 1 minus lambda times x must also belong to the set C. We have given several examples last time, even showing that the human body is not a convex set. And here we would look in from, look into from more of the geometrical perspectives and write down some important examples of convex sets. Now, before that I will just extend this idea a bit. Let us first define the notion of a convex combination. Convex combination of vectors. Now, co consider x 1, x 2, x k some k vectors which is given in R n. So, what you do is the question of now we are bothering about the question of defining a convex combination. So, a convex combination of these k elements is an element z which is written as lambda 1 x 1 plus lambda 2 x 2 I am assuming this is known to everyone vector addition lambda n x n sorry I this is again a mistake it should be lambda k x k with lambda 1 greater than 0 lambda 2 greater than 0 all the lambdas are greater than equal to 0 and the sum of the lambdas are equal to 1, just like lambda plus 1 minus lambda sums up to 1 and each of the lambdas are uh, greater than or equal to 0, because they are lying between 0 and 1. So, how do you define all possible convex combinations of a set C? You take any collection of finite number of elements from a set, do their convex combination, keep on changing the lambda. So, you will generate new new con combinations, keep on changing the number of elements that you take from the set. A very, very fundamental and very basic result about a convex set is the following. Every 
three convex sets contains all its convex combinations. Before going into very specific examples of convex sets and important ones, we would like to uh, state certain specific properties. These properties become important when optimization is handled. So, let us look at certain basic properties, because when you have a set, what are the properties you look for? See, when you have a set, when you have a class of sets, so con set of all convex sets, they form a class of sets in R n. And what you look for is, okay, what happens if I combine two sets, that is if I take the union of two sets. So, if my C 1 is con a convex set and C 2 is a convex set, the question is, is this convex? you would be obviously sad to know that the very first property that we are considering here turns out to be a negative property that okay, C 1 union C 2 is not convex. Let us see. Take a square here, take this square. And take this square in R 2 obviously, I am putting the x axis, y axis for your convenience, but that is really not required. So, this is my C 1 and this is my C 2. So, this whole set that looks some sort of bit of zig zigzag, this whole set like this is my C 1 union C 2, but then this whole set. So, take any point here and any point here and join it, it is outside any point here, any point here the line segment goes outside. So, C 1 union C 2 is not a convex set. So, if that dissatisfies you, we will give a positive result. What about C 1 intersection C 2? So, if both of these are convex sets, then this intersection itself is a convex set. Very simple, you can take this one and take this square. Squares are obvious examples of convex sets. Suppose this is my C 1 and this is my C 2. So, this is an area which is the intersection and of course, this is C 1 intersection C 2 and you can easily see that it is a convex set. I leave you as a homework, those who are listening to the course also have a bit of pen and paper with you because you need to just figure out something, everything would not be figured out because I do not want you to lose out on the fun. So, homework, prove C 1 intersection C 2 is convex or is a convex set. Let me tell you uh, any mathematical subject like this fascinating subject like convex analysis or convex optimization cannot be understood unless you do prove things yourself. Proof is an integral part of mathematics, of mathematical discourse and of mathematical understanding. So, without understanding proofs or without learning to prove things, the fun of a subject is almost lost. So, okay, these are the good properties. Now, I will describe some other property which is essential when you study optimization is the sum of two sets, sum of two sets 
assume for us it they are convex sets. So, assume C 1 and C 2 to be convex and I am asking the question what do you mean by term sum of two sets C 1 plus C 2. Now, here you have to realize that C 1 is a subset of the vector space R n and C 2 is also a subset of the vector space R n. So, whenever I am talking about C 1 plus C 2 the most natural definition is to consider all elements of the form z such that z is equal to x plus y where x belongs to C 1 and y belongs to C 2. So, this is sometimes called the Minkowski addition of two sets after the famous mathematician Minkowski. I do not uh, want to de define C 1 minus C 2 because you can define it likewise by the difference of two vectors. Uh, critical thing to observe here is twice of C, if you have two sets C, so you can add C plus C, but then, but then twice of C is always a subset of C 1 plus C 2, think why. and find an example where this is a proper subset of C 1 and C 2 and find an example where this is equal to C 1 and C 2. So, another piece of homework. Two C is proper subset of sorry, 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 sorry not C 1 C 2 it should be C plus C sorry. See one thing that you can observe that what is twice C, you are taking the same element and adding them, but C plus C does not mean that you take the same element from C and take the same element from C. It means take just one element from C and take another element from C which could be different to the other the element that you have chosen before and then add them. So, find an example where this is a proper subset. So, this homework is find examples. And also find an example where this equals. So, these are the two things that you try to figure out, you will have a lot of fun doing so, just playing around with sets in R2. Now, once I do this, I would also try to define the notion of a cone. Cone is an important class of sets used in optimization and convex cone is what will be of utmost importance. So, what is a cone? You can understand what is a cone because if you take an ice cream cone, you call it ice cream cone that, lo that is what it looks like, but in mathematics this cone is not just it ends up to the brim of the ice cream, but it you know it just keeps on extending, you can extend the whole thing in your imagination and so cone is a set S such that lambda times x is element of S if lambda is element, if x is element of sorry, if x is element of S and lambda is greater than equal to 0. So, for example, you take an example, take any ray going out of the origin, this is a cone, a pair of rays is a cone, but as you can understand it is not a convex one, the set is not convex in general. And of course, so any cone which is convex is called a convex cone, this is a cone. So, you can observe, you figure out that this definition what I have given will be satisfied. So, convex cone, convex cone, not a convex cone.
So, this is a very basic thing and now we go on to some important examples. The first and foremost example which is very, very important optimization is of the set R n plus. So, this is a convex set is a set of all x which is written as x equal to x 1 x to x n, but I should write it as a column. So, I give it as a transpose t, where x i is greater than 0 for all i from 1 to n. So, in our setting, this is r 2 plus. So, the interesting fact is that this is not only a convex set, important convex set, this is a convex cone. Another important convex set is the space of all symmetric positive definite matrices is a set of all x element of S n such that x n such that x is P S D that is positive semi definite x is P S D or in other words you can write it like this with the low inner ordering. So, how do you prove that this is a convex set? So, you take one x 1 from S n and another x 2 from S n, in fact S n plus. Now, what you need to do is to show that lambda x 1 plus 1 minus lambda x 2 is also in S n plus. So, you take the lambda of x 1 plus 1 minus lambda of x 2, in order to show it in is it in S n plus, we need to show that this matrix is positive semi definite. So, what you do is just do take this bilinear product. So, you can write this as w, you must put a bracket to understand that this is a matrix operating on this w, w times lambda x 1 into w plus w times 1 minus lambda x 2. So, if you look at this, this is nothing but lambda times now because all both of these are in S n plus. So, both of these are greater than or equal to 0 because w is any element in R n. So, this both of them are greater than or equal to 0, lambda is greater than or equal to 0 and 1 minus lambda is greater than or equal to 0, because to show the convex combination lambda is obviously chosen from 0 1, which is obvious fact, which you need not even state repeatedly. In convex analysis lambda is always between 0 and 1, when unless until mentioned. So, what you see here is this fact, that now all of this whole thing is greater than or equal to 0. So, Okay, let me not write and just put this is greater than or equal to 0 implying the fact that S n plus is convex. We will have more opportunity to talk about S n plus in the future and let me talk about an another class important class of sets called affine sets, which are a subclass of convex sets. So, what is an affine set? Affine set, if you take two points say in R 2 and the line segment joining them is a convex set, which I do not have to tell you, because the definition simply tells that. Definition of a line segment simply tells that this is a convex set. Now, think of the line which passes through the these two points.
Now, this line itself, if you look at it, is a convex set. Now, it is very important to know that, okay, if how do I define such a line or if you have a plane or a, say a figure like this, a triangular triangle, say, but a 2 D triangle in 3 D, then I can put it on a plane. So, how do I, but that plane is a convex set. So, how do I define such a set? So, such sets like this, like the line passing through two points is a class of convex sets called affine sets, which has the following definition that a set C is called affine. If lambda x 1 plus 1 minus lambda x 2 is element of C for any x 1 and x 2 element of C and lambda element of R. Note that lambda no longer has any sign here. So, of course, this is true for any lambda between 0 and 1 signifying that this is also a convex set. But every convex set is not an affine set because if you take say this set, this so take two points here, take the line passing through them. So, the line passing through them does not remain inside the set C. If this is my set C, the line passing through any two points does not remain in the set C. So, this set is not affine, while this convex this is affine. An important class of affine set is a straight line. So, you can write such straight lines as follows. So, take the set L, say it is a set of all x in R n. So, it is a set of all x which satisfies this equation, where A is a member of R n and B is a member of R. Now, what is important to me at this stage is very simple to prove that this is an affine set just by the properties of the inner product. Now, what is the geometry of this particular type of sets? So, if you look at the R2 geometry for this particular case, if n is 2, then you are basically looking at some line like this. Now, if you look at this line, what is the nature of A and okay, does A have anything to do with the line itself? Now, take any line point x 0 on the line, right. Then what would happen? Then of course, if x 0 is element of L, we can call this as linear manifold, that is a more technical term, but forget it. So, if x naught is element of L, then what happens is A of x naught is equal to B. Now, if that happens, then I can replace in this equation B with A of x naught and then I can write L as the set of all x such that A of x minus x naught is equal to B. So, what happens is that if you take this x and take, take any x here. So, if this is my x naught vector and this is my x vector, then this, this thing is in this sorry, just have to rub it. Okay. Now, this is your x vector and this is some x vector and take any x. So, this vector here is your x minus x naught. And what does this equation say is that this A is sorry, this would be a mistake A x minus x naught should be equal to 0, because you have put B equal to A x naught and then you transfer transferred it. So, what it says on the x minus x naught vector, so x minus x naught obviously is lying in this plane. You can understand 
that this vector x minus x naught a is perpendicular to the vector x minus x naught. But since x minus x naught lies along the plane from the geometry, so which means that a is perpendicular to the plane itself. So, what it what does it mean? So, what it shows that a is perpendicular to the plane itself at x minus x naught that is exactly what is the nature of the element a. So, so a is an element if you look at x minus x naught just a moment if you look at x minus x naught this element is in the orthogonal complement of the vector a right this is in the orthogonal complement of the vector a naturally that is that is what we had just said geometrically so which means x is element of x naught so this is so but if you take any element which is x naught plus a tilde right then of course immediately you will get this so x in rn which satisfies so that x is an element of x naught plus a tilde this sorry a a perp which is the orthogonal complement orthogonal complement of a these are terms on linear algebra which you are supposed to know orthogonal complement of a so any x which satisfies this is satisfying this and hence satisfying this and hence l can also be described like this so this is also a convex set but this is a rather an affine set and a very important class of affine set so this if you look at this l if you look at this l what does a straight line do so if i call this as ax equal to b then this straight line is dividing the plane into two parts any point that you take here would satisfy ax greater than equal to b because this is equal to b and you move up the value of, it leave the value of b and become bigger and you move down it leave the value of b and become smaller and so this part is called ax less than equal to b so basically i have divided this line ax equal to b has divided the plane into two parts which we call h u and this is called h l this is called the upper half space is a set of all x in r n such that a x is greater than or equal to b the lower half space h l is given by the set of all x in r n and l is of course h u intersection h l so we have now got a fairly decent amount of uh, explanations about or fairly decent amount of introduction to convex sets so after this we will talk about certain important properties of convex sets and then start describing convex functions now we have shown here that l is h u intersection h l but of course as a homework i would ask you to show that h u and h l are convex sets and by knowing that the intersection of two convex sets is convex you can immediately deduce that l is a convex set now an important property of convex set is the following that if you look at the interior of a convex set if you take a convex set C and look at its interior, I am sure all of you know what is the definition of an interior in case you do not look up any uh, standard book on analysis. So, if C is convex, then this set the interior of C is also a convex set. So, 
Similarly, if you look at the closure of a set C, if this is convex, this is the set C, the set C itself, if this is convex, then so is the closure. The proof of this is uh, very, very simple that is take a sequence z n, take or take a sequence z n element of C going to element z in the closure. So, you see whenever you have a z, you will have always have a sequence z n going to z, that is the definition. And using this definition, you can actually prove that the closure is also a convex set. So, you take two elements z 1 and z 2 in the closure. Now, what would you what would happen is that you would have z 1 n and z 2 n these two sequences where z 1 n converges to z 1 and z 2 n converges to z 2. So, now you make convex combinations. Now, these are elements in C. So, you make convex combination lambda z 1 n plus 1 minus lambda z 2 n, where lambda is between 0 and 1. Now, what happens because these are elements in C, this is also an element in C, this belongs to C. Now, when you take the limit, so of, of course, you can uh, take, you can fix up a lambda right, and take such sequences. Now, if you fix up the lambda that is you want lambda z 1 plus lambda z 2. So, you fix up a particular lambda and then take this sequence. Now, if you take the limit because it is a linear function, it's, so it will immediately give me that this whole thing converges to lambda z 1 plus 1 minus lambda z 2. So, whenever z 1 and z 2, but since this is in C by the very definition of closure, this is also belonging to the closure of C. So, whenever z 1 and z 2 belongs to the closure, this also belongs to the closure proving that closure of C is convex. Now, what is important is that how do you prove this to be a convex set. The proof of this relies on a very, very important property is called the interiority property of a convex set. I am assuming that this convex set C has an interior. Every convex set C need not have an interior, we will just speak about that. Okay. So, take this set in R 2, this whole thing inside and with the boundaries. So, it is a co closed convex set. So, you have this part, the white part as the interior of the set. Now, if you take any point in the boundary, say you take x in the boundary and you take y in the interior, now you join them by the straight line. So, any point in x y, take any z from x y such that z is not equal to x then z must belong to the interior of C this is a very, very fundamental result. If you take any z here, which is not equal to x, it must be in the interior. This is a very, very fundamental property. This will be used to prove this and many, many other things. So, as I told you that every convex set need not have an interior. Okay. How do I support my statement? Let us take an example. In mathematics, it is imperative that if you want to say something does not hold, just give an example, but if you want to say something holds, then you need to have a proof. So, you take the straight line, a line segment so joining these two points x y. So, this line segment is obviously a convex set. So, my question is whether this has an interior. Now, what do you mean by an interior in R 2. Remember x y is viewed as a set in R 2. Now, if I take any point here, then by interiority means I have to take a ball, we are already described what is a ball, a ball around this point. So, 
so that this whole ball should be in x y, but this does not happen. You take any point excepting the points x y, take any point it does not happen. So, x y if you look at the interior if I say i n t the interior this is empty, but then what is not? Is there something we can speak about its interiority? Because if I look at x y from a one dimensional viewpoint it has an interior. Then how do I uh, speak about some sort of interior of this set x y? This brings us to two important notions, the affine hull and the convex hull. So, keeping in with the tradition of convex analysis and convex optimizers, I will first define what is a convex hull, but affine hull is what would be of help here. You take any set a non convex one, convex hull is the smallest convex set which contains this set C. Now, this is my set C. Now, this set obviously is not convex which is very clear, then but you see if I take this last two end points and join them up and this new set with this boundary, this new set becomes convex. So, what convex hull is the smallest convex set C containing convex set containing the set C. So, you take any set C like this, you take any convex set containing this set C, set C is here with this whole thing. This is one convex set say S which contains the set C. Similarly, you can take another convex set which contains the set C and similarly, if you go on the intersection of all such sets would be finally, what we require the convex hull. So, convex hull if I have to define it is the smallest convex set containing C, containing a set C. So, which means if you have a set C the convex hull of C which we define as conv S is a set of all sorry convex hull of the set C. Convex hull of the set C which we define as the intersection of all the set C S where S is convex and C is a subset of S. But these are only very qualitative things when is there any way to represent in mathematics the representation of sets become a very very important issue especially when you do convex th things like optimization these representations help when you are doing the theory and also in computations so how do you represent the convex hull of a set convex hull of a set c so i hope you remember at the beginning of the lecture i spoke about convex combinations of a set c the convex hull of a set c is a collection of all the convex combinations of the set C, right. So, convex hull of a set C consists, consists of all elements z of the form z equal to lambda 1 x 1 plus lambda k x k, where x i is element of C for i equal to 1 to k and lambda i is greater than equal to 0 for all the i and summation over i lambda i is equal to 1. Now, this k is element of n that is this k can vary. So, you can just take any finite number of elements from the set C and make their convex combination put them aside in one set. The set that will be formed is a convex hull, but you see your k can be changed. And this is a bad factor in the representation that there are infinite such case you can have it is very difficult to really visualize such a set. This was uh, this problem was 
solved by this beautiful result of Kara Theodori. Kara Theodori's theorem says that if C is a subset of R n, then the convex hull of C is a set of all z such that z is equal to summation lambda i x i i is from 1 to n plus 1. Now, he has fixed it up, you just take n plus 1 number of elements with lambda i greater than equal to 0, summation lambda i is equal to 1, i is obviously from 1 to n plus 1 and all the x i's are element of C. Here is a beautiful representation, I do not have to this number k which will arbitrarily change with every z, j, z you, you, can, you take a z your k will change in general, here you take a z your k this will not change and this is a very, very fundamental result in convex analysis. The proof is essentially for a mathematical audience and not really for the audience that we are targeting here. For a proof you can see any book on good book on linear algebra or any book on convex analysis or the books which engineer prefer is this one, Introduction to Nonlinear Optimization or Nonlinear Programming by Bazara Shetty and Shirali. It is a Wiley publication, second edition is 1993 and I think there is also third edition. So, that and chapter 2 has a proof of very simple proof of this fact. So, now what is an affine hull? You can obviously make up the definition very simply. So, the affine hull of a set C is the smallest affine set containing the set C. Now, let us see what is the affine hull of that straight line or the line segment that we had drawn, not really a straight line, line segment. So, the affine hull, the smallest affine set, okay, this whole space R2 is an affine set. So, obviously, it contains this one. And the next affine set, by the very definition of affine set, you can understand in affine set, the whole lines have to be in the set, not just line segment. So, this line that is passing through these two points x, y, that is the affine hull, that is the affine hull of Now, look at this fact that if I take this x point, so point some point z and I take a ball of radius say delta. Now, even though is not contained in the set x y, this set is c equal to x y, this convex set x y, but if you observe it carefully the intersection of this ball centered at z of radius delta, its intersection with the affine hull of the set x y or affine hull of c, this is contained in c. So, the this if such a point z where this thing happens is called a point of is a relative interior point. So, z is called a relative interior point. Now, here instead of this straight line, if I take this square, so it is a two dimensional set, no longer a one dimensional set in R2, here it is a two dimensional set. If this is my C, what is the relative interior for this, sorry, what is the affine hull? So, affine hull 
or A F it is denoted as A F F C like con C is convex hull, A F F C is a fine hull. The fine hull of the set C in this particular case is nothing but the whole space R 2. So, what happens here is the following is that once your dimension goes down, when you are a lower dimensional set in a embedded in a higher dimensional space, your affine hull is also lower dimensional and those are the sets where you do not have the interior, but you have something like a relative interior. So, very very important result in convex analysis is the following, every convex set has a relative interior set has a non empty relative interior. So, no, relative interior is nothing but the collection of all relative interior points. So, this is a very very important statement, because if you take any finite full dimensional convex set like a three dimensional convex set in R 3 then it always has an interior and this set is this fact is of extreme importance to convex optimization. This is what is called the Slater's uh, constant qualification which is of extremely fundamental importance to the study of optimality conditions in convex optimization and because that optim those optimality conditions are used in algorithms. So, they this whole fact takes in a very meaningful role. So, now we have a fair idea about what a convex, what is a convex set, the convex hull, the affine hull, the very basic facts about convex sets. Let me uh, just tell you a fact about convex cone. How would you characterize a convex cone? Let us go back to this whole issue of cone. Now, the convex cone that we have you know two important convex cones that we have spoken about is R n plus and S n plus. Now, how do you characterize a convex cone? A cone C is convex if and only if, this is a short form of writing if and only if I f f, if and only if for any x and y in C. x plus y is also in C. Check it out with this. So, this is your homework. Too many homeworks today, but you need to figure out the simple things to have a better idea. You take take any two points in R n plus. you see this point is also in R n plus. Here of course, our demonstration as I have always told you would be with n equal to 2 and of course, if you take S n plus. So, the if you take two elements x and y with x positive semi definite and y positive semi definite is a very simple fact or a very simple way to prove that this is also P s d. So, with this basic fact we stop speaking about convex sets and in tomorrow's lecture which would be part 2 of this we will speak about convex functions, but I warn you that we would really need to talk about convex functions which are extended valued. Of course, you know what, are, what is the definition of a convex function and few import, uh, imp an important property that every local minimum is global when you minimize a convex function over a convex set, but we have not yet considered with all importance the notion of convex functions which are extended value and we really have to do it and we have no other choice because functions convex functions which naturally arise in optimization are of this nature and we cannot say no to it. So, with this we uh, stop today's lecture which was essentially on convex sets with their basic properties and next lecture would be on convex functions and would we would uh, speak about them in part 2 of this lecture and part 3 which would again we will come back to convex 
sets, but it will essentially be a con combination of convex sets and convex functions, which is a extremely fundamental um, thing called separation of convex sets, because uh, as many mathematicians think that optimization theory is a long corollary of separation theorem, possibly it is, but not, not exactly so. So, we would like to go into on the third lecture, just this is the first part, second part and the third part is on separation of convex sets in which we will do some proofs. So, thank you very much and good night.